At the age of 10, these three children endure everyday struggles that would test most adults mentally and physically. Danielle is still the size of a toddler. She knows she will spend her adult life in the body of a child. Sometimes I do get upset because, like, it's in fashion, most of the clothes that I see, and I can't wear them. When she was 18 months old, 90% of Terry's body was burnt in a house fire. She defied medical odds when she made it through the first night and has continued to defy all the odds since. When I grow up, I'd like to be a nurse. Callum may look like an ordinary 10-year-old boy, but his way of life is quite unique. At home, he's the man of the house, caring for his disabled mother and five-year-old sister. My mum has always had this condition. But from the age I could, I've always tried to help. Sometimes I've made things worse by trying to help. But I learn from my mistakes and I try to make it better and better. Despite their hardship, these children remain lively, happy, grounded and strong. Each one of them embracing life like any 10-year-old. What is it that enables these unique children to cope? And how will their already complex lives get harder as they move into teenage years and adulthood. These are Britain's extraordinary 10-year-olds. Well, school days, I work at the Shazen. Uh, it's a weekend that I'll just wake up any time. I'm tired at 10 o'clock. <laughs> no go out there, I'd like to be in there. Because I like, I would like to work in the hospital. Because I'd like to help people who's ill. But I think I know how to do bandages because I had lots of me. Terry Calversbert began life as a typical bouncing baby girl. But in 1998, an accidental house fire ripped through their home, leaving 18-month-old Terry suffering 88% burns to her body and fighting for her life. Nobody expected this extraordinary little girl to live through that night. The type of injury uh, Terry suffered is one of the worst insults that the human body can suffer. On the night of the 20th of November, 1998, the room that Terry was sleeping in went up in flames. The actual accident itself was quite extensive. It was, it was mainly where she was in her bedroom, it was sort of ground floor flat. But obviously by the time somebody realised what was going on, it was obviously it was too late and you couldn't actually get in there to get her out. The whole flat was gutted, but even the firemen, they didn't realise she was in there. They thought someone was in there, but they could never they couldn't find her. And the only reason why, how they found her is because she gasped for breath at exactly the right point. They resuscitated her at the time and it was, it was a matter of them going there or losing her completely, so they put her in the back of a police car and went. With every second vital for her survival, Terry was rushed to the local hospital and you go completely blank. I just sat in the grass verge and didn't know what to do. A stunned Paul was quickly taken to the hospital in another police car to be with his daughter. When he arrived, the sight of Terry was just too much for him to accept. She was just like, you know, um, it's like a silver sheet, really. It's like a heat, heat sheet. The only thing you saw was two little eyes, and the smell of it was, was horrible. You can't be described the smell, it was horrible. He walked into her room and then walked straight out wanting just to remember his daughter as she was, not as she had become in the last horrific few hours. But after that, I made a point that if I can't see her as she is, then how am I expecting anybody else to see her as she was? This is Terry Calversbert at 10 years old. I go to football 
ball and a fly day and I learn how to do football and how to play it. Position, good girl, wait for the ball, wait for the ball. But eight years ago, when she suffered 90% burns in an accidental house fire, nobody expected her to make it through one night. If she was going to have any chance of survival, she had to be transferred to a specialist burns unit. On arrival at the Broomfield Hospital in Essex, she was immediately put under the care of world-class burn surgeon, Dr. Peter Zhivalsky. I was on call that night and uh, I was called in to see her. Uh, she obviously had a very serious burn injury uh, and uh, the whole team obviously were involved in uh, initially resuscitating her uh, and then later on uh, the following day operating on her. Terry had a, an extensive uh, not, up to 90% full thickness burn injury which uh, affected her face, uh, her trunk, her, both upper limbs and both lower limbs. Uh, unfortunately Terry's fingers were essentially dead uh, when she came in. Uh, we didn't remove them to start off with because we always give everything the benefit of the doubt, but during the course of her treatment, it became apparent that the, the fingers on both hands, unfortunately, were not viable. We had to remove them. Um, similarly, uh, her foot, it became apparent that the burn was so bad there that the foot was not viable, the tissue there was not alive, and we had to remove it. Terry had a very deep burn to the scalp and skull. Uh, and at the time of her injury, the burn was down through the skull to the uh, lining of the outer lining of the brain. He always told you the worst, which we wanted to hear because then we prepare ourselves for the worst. You know, a number of times she's stopped breathing and they had to do something in the theatre, they had to do it a few times. So, and we had some very, very big decisions to make as well. And because every time I took the theatre, she would stop breathing and they had to resuscitate her and it happened every single time. And it got to the stage where they said, if it happened again, you know, what do you want us to do? Do you want to let her go? And that'd be it. Because obviously it's not very fair on her. And it took a big, we, we sat down for days, well, days, it seemed like days, probably a few hours, <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. And it came to the decision, if it did do it, then that'd be it, just, just let her go. And then she never done it again. <laughs> you know, the strange thing about it, she never, ever done it again. It was three months before Terry was off the critical list and eight months before she was allowed to leave the hospital. During this time, the whole experience was too much for Terry's mother to handle. She left Paul caring for Terry alone and Terry hasn't seen her mum for seven years. In that time, Terry has undergone over 80 operations in an attempt to rebuild her body that was so badly burned away. She had the majority of her full thickness burn wound excised, uh, and that was then resurfaced with uh, temporary or donor skin, uh, and later on artificial skin. Despite eight years of reconstructive surgery, Terry is still left with a catalogue of physical disfigurements and disabilities. She lost all her hair. She'll never ever have hair back because she lost all the the growing part and everything. She lost it right down to the skull, so she wears a wig. If I go out, I will wear my wig, but if I don't go out, I won't wear the shirt on. But also, because of her ears and because of the, the fire and all the medicine she had, she lost a bit of hearing. My skin gets all dry. Um, she's got no nose, but, well, no sort of the fleshy part of the nose, she's got the bone structure, so hopefully they can build on that. And then it's her feet. She's lost one foot completely from the ankle down, so she's got nothing there. This is my shoe that goes on my left leg to help me walk and run. Without it, I can't run very well or walk very well. There's a foot inside my shoe. The other foot is normal, but even then she's got her official sort of splints on in her foot and she wear normal shoes so you wouldn't notice it when she stand up and walk around. Caring for Terry has been a full-time job for Paul since the fire but to give him a break one weekend a month Terry stays with Alison and her family. I met Terry originally um, through my job. 
I was a nursery nurse with the community children's nursing team in Ipswich and um, I used to go in and do her bath and her skincare and put her to bed twice a week just to give her dad a bit of a break. Oh. Terry's a very humbling little girl because you kind of think, you know, I gripe when I cut my finger or stub my toe and yet you think what Terry's been through and what have I got to whinge about. And when you watch her try so hard to, to do something, it makes you realise that, you know, you, you can try to do things and you can get through things. Terry obviously has her disabilities from her burns um, and obviously her hands aren't really there. Um, and she looks very different from normal 10-year-old little girls. But once you get past that, she is perfectly normal. I've got 13. 13? Well How many have you me? got? Not that many, I don't think. She never really comments on the way she looks. I mean, she'll, she'll say if she's dressed up like a princess that she looks like a princess. I do think that as she gets older, obviously things are going to be an issue. Obviously boys are going to be an issue going to nightclubs. Um, and at the moment, Terry mixes with quite a small group and obviously as she gets older she's going to go out of that network and she's going to meet an awful lot of people who maybe don't know who Terry is but her personality is just so strong that I think at the moment she'll cope with it and she will just tell people. <laughs> OK, as you know it's World Book Day today, I don't need to tell you that because we're all dressed up. Despite all her disabilities, Terry attends a mainstream school and has had no problem keeping up with or being accepted by her friends. The other children have been with her since, um, a lot of them since they very first started school. So they've known her for most of her life, or certainly her school life. Um, so they, Terry's just Terry to them, you know, and they know what she can do, what she can't do. They'll help her, you know, just little things they'll help her do, stick things into her book if she can't do it. They'll put a chair up at the end of the day and they just do it for her with no question. So they really look after her well and just accept her as she is. I'm going to draw an island there and we're going to pirates. Terry was so young at the time of the fire. She's never known a life without disfigurements. She's adapted her life around them and doesn't let them stop her progressing. She's learned to write and draw by holding the pencil between both her hands. I'm going to sand, that's the island, that's the sea. Yeah, because I'm going to do one bait there. All right, OK, that'll probably be enough, I reckon. That's too much there, isn't it? You're going to have to go to sea then, isn't it? Are you going to use felt tips or pencil crayons? They're over on that table over there when you need them then, OK? So I want completely tidy tables, things away, and then I'll see which table's ready to line up. Right, so will anyone get five? First, I wonder, table points. Terry's independence has changed really since she started school, when she's got into sort of the infant school. Sort of a change overnight, really. One minute she went in very shy. She came out and she was full of beans and she was telling me what to do. But that was good because then I knew that she was getting on fine at school and she was normal. Senior school is going to be the biggest. Uh, it's going to be the biggest change yet because obviously she's going to go up to a lot bigger school, where she hasn't got the closeness of all the children because there's so many children there. It's a big environment. It's a different timetable. It's different activities. Harder activities. Since the fire, Paul's life has been solely devoted to Terry. But in 2005, he met Nikki, who he plans to marry. Nikki now shares Terry's care, and the two have developed a special bond. Nikki is going to be my stepmom. We do lots of girly things when Dad is around. You know, it's amazing what she faces on a daily basis. You know, nobody. You don't see it. Even I didn't until I moved in. Like what she, what she faces on a daily basis. If she can get over that, she can get over anything. At ten, uh, Terry is at a crucial turning point in her life. In the years immediately following the fire, the most important thing for Terry and her family was keeping her alive and healthy, and enabling her to have as normal a life as possible. Now she's verging on her teenage years, when appearances become much more important and society becomes much less sympathetic to those who look different. 
Today, Terry's returning to the hospital, where she beat all the odds eight years ago, when she survived the night. She's about to find out what plans Peter Shavalsky has to reconstruct her body and face over the next few years as she develops into a young woman. At the age of 10, uh, when I see Terry, I'm extremely proud for, for her, her father and her family, uh, uh, in particular to see the way she's risen above her, her injury. Right, now then, how are things? In the future, Terry's going to need further surgical reconstruction. We're in the process of reconstructing a hand. We're going to have to continue releasing any areas of scar that tighten up. We'd release the contracture, put some artificial skin or integra in there, and we'd see if we could get that down as well. The scarred skin and the skin grafted areas do not stretch and grow in the same way as normal skin. So maybe you'd release this side first and get that straight, yeah, or straighter. In Terry's case, the skin in this part of the arm uh, is getting a bit tighter and causing her some restriction of movement at the elbow. So at some stage in the future, we're going to have to release that and put some more skin in. What about her face? I know you talked about that last time, didn't you? About yeah. Whether to do anything with her nose and that. You know. I think she's going to need to be a bit older to do something there. If we make her a nose now that suits her face as she is at the moment, in five or ten years' time, that nose will be too small for her. And Mr. C, yeah, no, I think that's no. okay, darling. That was right, that was fine. Yeah, that's nice, that's, that's okay. In Terry's future, she will thrive. I think she's got the mental fortitude to actually do very well. I think uh, her inner strength uh, will shine through. We find that, you know, what's up here, what's in here, uh, really does help people overcome uh, their problems. Um, at the beginning, we had these visions of her obviously always being at home, never leaving home. She wouldn't have the confidence to leave home. You know, she'll never find anybody because she'll be picked on. She looks different, you know, them sort of things. Now, when we look back on it, I think it's stupid. You know, the way she's going now, she'll be, you know, she'll leave home at 18, I reckon, you know, get a place of herself, start work, you know, do everything normal, and that's what I wanted to do. When I go out there, I'd like to get married and have children. <laughs> it is going to be tough. But we'll get there. You know, it's just as simple as that. You have to get there. She can face what she's faced already. She can face anything.